Jamie Dalrymple scored his first 100 since he returned to Middlesex as he almost single-handedly kept his side right in their latest LV County Championship match with rival Surrey in Guildford. The first day was heavily affected by the weather, but what play there was had still allowed Surrey to take charge, reducing Middlesex to 88 for four. Dalrymple and Chris Rogers had to get their heads down early on after the first part of this day was again lost to the conditions. Dalrymple has not been able to make a huge impact since his return to the capital and he came into this match with just 130 championship runs to his name from his five innings to date. Not a bad return, but not as good as he is clearly capable of. He was to prove that on this day, which started well for him and then just got better. Rogers had begun his day on 33 and his 50 was not long in coming. A fall through the covers off Xander de Brain, his 10th, took him there from 114 balls. Rogers' style is certainly a unique one, but it served him brilliantly over the years and was doing so again here as he and Dalrymple headed towards lunch with the total moving on to 152. But 10 minutes before the break, Rogers was struck on the pad by De Brain and the batsman didn't wait for the decision before heading off after making 59. At lunch, Middlesex had reached 157 for five and had this big appeal against Dalrymple for a catch behind being given in Surrey's favour, then the day may have panned out very differently. As it was, the batsman completed his second 50 of the season, a season which started late for him. It had taken him 108 balls to reach. The home attack kept plugging away and De Brain struck again to have John Simpson LBW for 15 before Stephen Crook lobbed a simple catch to Gareth Batty off Tim Lindley to leave Middlesex in some trouble on 191 for seven. Surrey would have been feeling pretty good about themselves and would have fancied knocking over the rest pretty quickly, but first they had to end what was becoming a frustrating little partnership between Dalrymple and Tim Murta, who were able to add 34 more runs for the eighth wicket. Jay Durback then had Murta held by Batty after he'd made 16, and Batty then took his third catch of the day to get rid of Stephen Finn, this time off his own bowling. Alas for Batty, he had dropped two earlier chances at slip, including Dalrymple, on 51. With Middlesex on 237 for nine and with only Corey Collymore to come in, it appeared that Dalrymple's innings was going to come to a premature end, but he then came into his own, trying to keep the strike and making the most of it with some superb placement. This was undoubtedly the pick of his many fine shots as he drove De Brain over the covers for a six as he closed in on a memorable hundred. His heart must have been in his mouth when De Brain struck the pads of Collymore while Dalrymple was in the 90s, but thankfully for him, the umpire didn't raise the finger. And that meant that Dalrymple was able to reach the 11th ton of his first class career. He took it coolly in his stride and it was nice to see him receive some warm applause from the Surrey fieldsman. Dalrymple had faced 164 balls. With that out of the way, he could really play his shots now, treating England's derm back with disdain at times. He made 122 and dominated a crucial last wicket stand of 71 when Lindley finally removed Collymore for seven, Tom Maynard taking the catch in the gully. Thanks to Dalrymple though, Middlesex had made 308 all out. And that's all the play we had as the summer's weather again intervened before Surrey could begin their reply. With so much time already lost in this match, it may be tough for either side to force a result from here, even with two days to go.